Let's visit the chair. Alright, here we go. You want to say hi to everybody first? Hi everyone, how you doing? I'll take that as a good. I'm so happy we're sitting down. Me too. I told everybody when I saw you in the room a while ago, you were like, like a god right there. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Alright. So Lauren, how are you? Are you guys you like, like the Philippines? I, yes, I am loving being here. We've only been here about a day, but uh, I went out walking yesterday and it's incredibly beautiful. Around Moa, around this place? What about you? I have just been enjoying the hotel and the sleeping. <laughs> it's a mess of you, yes. <laughs> We've heard you just came from Brazil also, right? Of course indeed, yes. Okay. Well, the Philippines is, is different and the Philippines is the best. Yeah! yeah. Yes, and we're so happy to have the both of you here. Anyways, here we go. Um, the Witcher has been translated in 20 different languages. Um, Lauren, were you a fan of The Witcher before working on The Witcher? Um, I was a fan of The Witcher books. I had read the first book, The Last Wish, uh, before Netflix approached me about the show, and I was a huge fan of it. Um, so getting to do this has just been a dream come true. It's so much, um, it's so much bigger than what I thought it was going to be. So I never expected to come to the Philippines, that's for sure. But here we are. Well, welcome to the Philippines. <laughs> I'm, I'm, some of the press uh, members today have has seen some of the episodes, correct? Yeah. yeah. And fantastic. It's incredible. Um, Henry, what about you? Were you a fan of The Witcher? Were you a fan of the character before playing uh, the character? <laughs> Absolutely, I was, yes. Uh, I My introduction to the character first came through the games. I've been a big PC gamer, and I've been gaming since I was a young boy, and then when after, after I met Lauren, Lauren told me that there were a series of books, and I knew there was a series of books, but I just assumed that they were based upon what the games had created. Little did I know that Sam Kosky had actually written them way before, and the games were based on the books, and so I got to those and fell in love with them, and I've been a fantasy genre fan since, since I was a boy as well, and uh, for me it was just such a wonder to read something so new but a fresh take on the genre, right? I mean, can I ask, how did you get the role? Did you audition for it? Did you call? Did they pick you? How did that happen? Can I ask? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, it was, I heard that Netflix were making it into a show and I called my agents and I said, right guys, I, I want to at least get into the room here uh, as early as possible and, and see if I can get this. This is really, really important to me. And they said, okay, cool, great. And then I didn't hear anything back for a week. And so I called them that week and said, have you done anything yet? And they said, yeah, yeah, no, we, we put a call to Netflix. And I was like, yeah, but have you heard that? And they went, uh, well, yes, we have. And there's nothing going on yet. And I was like, well, keep on calling until you find out what's going on. And don't stop calling. And so I called them back every three days and said, have you spoken to them again? And they said, yeah, yeah, okay, well, we'll call again. And, bring in. and they kept on with this. And eventually, uh, when Lauren was ready to take meetings, they must have said, look, you've got to meet this guy, otherwise he's going he's gonna to turn up at the door. And it'll be embarrassing. <laughs> and so I met with Lauren, we had a lovely chat about the character, and about the storyline, and, and then she had to go through a casting process. And so I think it was about six or seven weeks later, uh, I got a call saying, yeah, would you like to audition for the role? And I was on holiday at the time. I cancelled my holiday, and we all flew into New York, and we had a, an audition there, and the rest is history. Meant to be. Yeah. Definitely meant to be. They all agree. They all agree. Wow. Um, so can you describe to me, Lauren, your working relationship with Henry? How is that? How's your work like? It's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing. Um, um, you know, when I first met Henry, we had such a good meeting, and we really did. We got in depth to the character and the, the way that I wanted to tell these stories. But I was very honest, and I said, "We don't, we don't have scripts yet. We haven't started the process. I don't have a job to offer you." Um, and then we did go through the casting process, and we met 207 other potential gals. Um, and at the end of the day, what I realized is that as I had continued writing those scripts, I always had Henry's voice in my head. Okay. And so when... when it's a terrifying prospect. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, when we met again, we just immediately kicked off a great creative relationship. And I think what a lot of people um, don't know about actors, specifically on television, um, we show up, we shot for 178 days. Um, that's a lot of days. And we work very long hours, 
mostly through the night and the rain and the snow we shot in Central Europe. Um, and you count on your actor not just to embody the character, which obviously Henry does incredibly well, but you also count on your actor to be a leader on set, to show up, to set the tone. Um, one of my favorite things about Henry is how seriously he takes the job. He not only shows up prepared, knows Geralt inside and out, better than I do now, um, but he also shows up on time, ready to work with a great attitude. And to me, that's that's all I want at work every day. And so that partnership has just been amazing between us. Wow. Oh, thanks for that. You're so welcome. <laughs> for Henry, how did you prepare for the character? I mean, if you see the series, you look different. You have long hair. You're, you're just different, right? Very in character. How did you prepare for that? The preparation for me, for Geralt, was a little bit inbuilt. Okay. As I say, I've been a fan of the fancy genre since I was a boy, and my father would read to me before I could read, and he was always fancy genre books, and every book I've picked up to read uh, just for the sake of reading for enjoyment in my free time has more often than not been part of the fancy genre. And so when I came to playing the games, I was watching, playing the games, thinking, how could I make this into a movie or a TV show? And then after I met with Lauren and read the books, it was all just, it all happened quite naturally, internally speaking. And then I had the good fortune of working with Lauren, who was so wonderfully, such an open book when it came to us discussing the character and to how he was going to look and what we were going to, how we we're going to adapt it. And, and, when we eventually got me in the chair and Jackie Rathor and Avila Mass, the girls in charge of actually making me look like Geralt, did such an incredible job that what I hadn't done preparation-wise or what I couldn't do preparation-wise uh, was finished off in that two-hour process every morning. And I'm, I'm incredibly thankful to those ladies for, for doing such a hard job, not just every day, but every night as well. They took their, their work home with them. and. Jackie made sure that wig was looking perfect. There were three wigs, and they all went through different processes, and she was she was having nightmares about it. Right, Jack, where are you? Oh, she's here, Jack's here. She's somewhere here. Yeah, everyone, a round of applause for Jack. Give yeah. Three different wigs. So you fight with a sword here. Is the sword heavy? Can you explain to us how did you train with the sword fighting? How did you do all of this? Um, the sword, was it heavy? Yes. <laughs> To a degree, I mean, a real sword, a, a perfectly balanced sword, is, is heavy to a point, but not that heavy. The trickiest thing about uh, fighting on set with a sword, with a real weight sword, is that you're not swinging through something. Um, you're not trying to actually kill someone or hit someone, and so stopping the sword is the trickiest bit. Um, because normally, if you just you do a swing and you carry it through behind you. Did you whack anybody? I uh, accidentally... Not, not, not the real one. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. no. Uh, when, when you do stunt fighting, especially with the lightweight swords, it is, I mean, in an ideal world, you don't make contact with anyone's hands or anything, but if you're doing a very technical fight, then it's pretty much half the course. You're going to make contact with some stage. All right, very, very nice. I have notes here, so but I always forget my questions. Um, so, what are Gerald's secret powers? Uh, well, Gerald, aside from being, um, going to be fast, strong, greater endurance, and long life than, than, than your average average human, he can also cast basic spells. And this is all part of a, a process which they gain from going through alchemical trials as boys and various amounts of training. And these spells are, they're not as strong as the kind of spells you'd have uh, sorceresses and sorcerers cast. Uh, but when combined with their uh, their combat abilities and their physical prowess, they can be incredibly deadly. But aside from all of that, I think Geralt's true secret power is his capacity to love and his belief in in the world for being a better place, genuinely. What he presents to the world is, is not necessarily how he feels on the inside. So basically Geralt is a lover boy. <laughs> he just likes to love. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily choose those words. <laughs> But yes, he's, he's, he's a lover and a fighter. Yeah, because he looks really, really, really tough right there. But yes. Is he soft somewhere? Uh, he's he's, uh, somewhere, he's a, a very warm heart. <laughs> no, I mean, he's, yes. you know. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're laughing at me. Yeah, right. The Filipinos love you. Give a round of applause. 
So, <laughs> Lord, you guys shot in different locations, huge locations, right? Can you tell us some of the locations you guys shot in? Yeah, so we primarily shot in Budapest, Hungary. That's where our sound stages were. So a lot of the interiors that you see around there and a lot of um, forests that we shot. We shot a lot of forests, every forest that we could find. Um, but we also shot in uh, Vienna, Austria, at a lovely castle. We shot in Poland. The books are Polish. It was really important to us um, to actually go back to where the books were from and make sure we're capturing some of that essence. And then we did almost a month-long shoot in the Canary Islands in Spain, which was probably, uh, I mean, that was sort of the most incredible thing. We were on several different islands. We were up at the tip-top of mountains and down on black sand beaches. Um, there were two units going at all times, and I think Henry and I, unfortunately, were always on the cold unit, no matter what. And then we'd see pictures of the other unit down at the beach, and people are wearing bathing suits. We're like, hey, no. I'm not going to getting sunburned. Yeah, we're freezing. Um, but no, we got, to, um, we got to shoot a lot of incredible places. It was important to us because video games already exist in this world, and video games obviously are CGI and animatics. Um, it was really important to us to go to as many real places as we could and capture actual beautiful backgrounds. Um, so we were on the road a lot. Next time, if you guys need a beach and you need a suntan, the Philippines is the best place. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell that to Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> read that, read that. Dear Netflix. <laughs> next time, next time. Um, so how was it uh, for you as the, as the showrunner, how was it adapting the novel into um, the series? Um, it was really challenging at first, um, not because there wasn't enough story, but because of just how much story there is. There are eight novels. Um, it's about 3,000 pages of work. And, um, you know, when we're deciding stories for the first season, we have eight hours to tell uh, tell a chapter, basically, you know, of, of Geralt's journey, of Yennefer's journey, and of Ciri's journey. So the very first thing was to kind of just, where do we want to start the story? Um, and it's why I went back to the short stories, um, which were the first books that uh, Anders Sikorsky wrote. It, they're really about Geralt's adventures in the world. And I knew that we wanted to do some cool monsters. There's a lot of cool monsters in those pages. Um, but I also knew that we wanted to appropriately build up what the continent is and make sure that we understand the people that are in it and the politics of the place and the society and the hierarchy and specifically where witchers fit into that. Um, Geralt's journey is one of a lot of loneliness at the beginning and a lot of being on the outside. And so we needed to understand what the world was to, to really set that up. So that's why we started with those books. Yes, the continent. You guys know the continent, right? Yes, it's where the witcher is taking place in. Can you, can you explain the politics that goes through the continent and how, how living in the continent is? Politically speaking, it's not a wonderful place to live. In fact, just speaking full stop, it's not a wonderful place to live. Uh, there's a lot of tensions between the different species that, that live on the continent, and even in between humans, the humans, there's a lot of political tension. And so everything at all stages is like a tinderbox, and it's just waiting for a spark to set it up. So it's intense. Yeah. And there's monsters that are just Running rampant, killing people. Right, yeah, <laughs> those and, two. yeah and monsters. <laughs> <laughs> guys, if you guys don't know, Lauren, I'm sure you guys know, Lauren's been working on and has worked on Daredevil. Woo! More love, more love. Woo! The Defenders. Woo! The Umbrella Academy. Woo! Wow. I guess you guys don't like that one. <laughs> So, question? No questions. Question. You can tweet it later. We have a hashtag, by the way. Hashtag The Witcher in Manila. The Witcher in Manila. And use the app Netflix page. Just reminders. I do answer things on Twitter. That's the oh, you don't? No, I do. I, I love Twitter. <laughs> nice. So, for you, Laura, can you talk about um, approaching the project on a woman's perspective and writing and building the character of Siri Yennefer? How was that? You know, it's a really interesting question, because I never think of myself as a female writer. I'm just a writer trying to tell good stories. Um, a brilliant writer. <laughs> Thank you. 
That would be weird if I called myself a brilliant writer trying to tell stories, but I appreciate that. Um, no, so what's important to me is to make sure that the stories that we're telling about women are as dimensional as inter and interesting as the ones we're telling about men. It's not about women being more important, it's not about men being more important. It's about making sure that all of these characters are fully fleshed out. Um, and for me, you know, I like to describe the story of the Witcher as a broken family coming together. Um, which, in this family, there's three members. There's Geralt, there's Jennifer, and Ciri. And if we want to make that, that collision course of them coming together the most interesting, then they all have to be interesting characters. So, Geralt, I think, in the short stories that we're pulling from, he's an incredibly fleshed out character. Um, Sapkowski spent a lot of time so, so that we understand Geralt's soul and his damage, where he's coming from, where he wants to go, his dreams, all of that. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we understood the same about Ciri and Yennefer. And I think what happens, well, when you get to the episodes where you see these characters start to meet, you see that making sure that we love these characters for who they are will make their, uh, their interactions all the spicier. Unique. Henry, um, I have to ask, uh, in every role, you're different. You're very, very different. That's how brilliant of an actor you are. Um, how did you prepare for, physically prepare for this role? Was there a different kind of physical preparation, training? Was it, was it different? Every, every training experience is different depending on the job because the, the trickiest thing about training for any role is finding the time to fit the training in. But for this one in particular, because of the athleticism of Geralt's fighting style, there's a lot of pirouettes, there's a lot of explosive movements, and a lot of uneven ground. You're not fighting in, in a gym, you're fighting on a, a slope with cobbles, and it's a dusty floor as well, or it's raining, whatever the case may be. And so you have to make sure that everything is, is protected, and you build up the right muscle groups which can protect things like knee joints, um, or, or whatever it may be, hips, elbows, elbows shoulders. And that was what me and my trainer focused on the most. Aside from the aesthetic, we had to make sure that my body could uh, keep up with, with the schedule and the, and the fights. And we know you don't do stand up most, correct? That is correct. On this one, absolutely not. All right, I just asked that, can you? Yeah, okay. Madame, uh, Madame. In the Philippines, we always call everybody Madame, so I'm sorry, I apologize. I love that. <laughs> Anyways, can you talk more about the amazing crew, the stunt, the stunt crew, the production crew, the set designers, everything? Oh my god, absolutely. I will leave the stunt crew to Henry because he has the best interaction with them and, right. uh, and can talk to them or talk about them individually. What I will say about our stunts um, was amazing because in general, when I approach fights and, and Henry approaches them, I know much the same. I don't want to just see people banging swords against one another. You can, you know, uh, you can do that on any show. To me, every fight is about what is the story that fight's trying to tell. Um, how is that fight furthering the relationship between two characters? Do they want to fight? Do they not want to fight? How is that part of the story? Um, and our our stunts were amazing with that. Um, I would say, I mean, the, there's so much credit to give out on the show. Um, Sophie Holland, our casting director, uh, gets first and foremost all of the credit because she's the one that found these incredible actors to fill these roles. Um, and she did a worldwide search. We cast everywhere. She flew everywhere to meet anyone who thought that they could embody one of these characters. Um, the writing staff, obviously, um, the show is on their shoulders, not on mine. Um, there are six writers in addition to me and a support staff of four, and they're really, their brains at work are really the ones that, that come up with these stories. I write the pilot, and they just take the ball and run from there. Um, Andrew Laws, our production designer, he's the one, when you guys watch the show, all of the beautiful scenery, that's all out of his brain. Um, and we had an incredible relationship. He, he would dig back into the source material, into the books, find every description of every land and building, and then head out into the world and try to find it. Um, and when he couldn't find it, he'd design it himself. Um, Tim Aslam, costume designer. I mean, there's, there's so many people. We carry a crew of about 300 people at all times. Wow. Wow. So you use CGI a lot also, but you also did a lot of um, set designs. Yes, so um, it's a 
a great question because obviously it's a, it's a world of fantasy and monsters don't exist in our world and magic doesn't exist in our world, at least not this type of magic. Um, or the, this type of monsters, actually. Um, so, you know, obviously we did have to rely on CGI a lot. What we would do with um, both, both sets and set design um, and also monsters is we would start with whatever we could find in the environment. Um, for monsters, sometimes even that was via prosthetics. We're a very actor-based show. If I can see the actor in some way, that's what I want to do. I don't want Henry fighting uh, something that's not there. Um, so we would try to use something organic and real as much as possible, and we try to build on that. I have, uh, it says here, um, the author of the book, uh, Andrish Saposhi. Sapkowski, yes, Sapkowski. that was pretty good. Oh, thank you, that was really difficult. Because my family is Woody Shelley, so it's kind of But Sapkowski is harder. <laughs> <laughs> I got that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you're the best. <laughs> I mean, he came, he came one time on the set. And how was that from writing the novel and to seeing everything come to life? What was his reaction in, in, in this? Um, you know, he, uh, he came and he got tears in his eyes. It was, he walked around and I think, you know, as, as a writer, um, I would be terrified of turning my work over to someone else and saying, let's see your take on it. Right. Um, obviously, it's also a very popular work. It's beloved by millions of people. Um, so I think he probably was terrified. <laughs> um, but he came and um, he got to meet Henry in a really funny interaction as well. Um, but he just walked around and I think he was really blown away by how his world had come to life. Henry can tell you, he, uh, he was performing a specific st stuff that day. Um, can you tell us about that, Henry? When I, when I first met Andrew, I, I was obviously very nervous to meet him. I, it, this is the first time we had ever, ever met. And I was in full Geralt costume and makeup and hair and I was wondering what he was going to think. Uh, and what his reaction would be, and so I, I approach him, shake his hand. Everyone's standing around watching us, and, the, the, and I'm about to do this uh, this stunt, which is a drop from the ceiling onto the floor about 15, 20 feet. And it's uh, the trickiest thing about it was that it was backwards, and I had someone on top of me at the time. And uh, he, the first thing he says is. I didn't write this, it's not my fault. It's not my fault at all. So you can't blame me. And uh, then we had to rush off, I had to go focus on the stunt. And so uh, as I, I would love another opportunity to sit down with him and, and wax lyrical about The Witcher and the world and, and where it came from and, and what his inspirations were. But that was my, my one only experience. Oh, you haven't met him yet again? No, I'm not since. No, no, I mean, we, we, had some, we had some dinner together, but it was a large table of people and there wasn't much of a chance to talk. So that scene that you had to drop from 15, 15 feet up? I think it was about 15 feet. Uh, I think it was, uh, we actually just measured it, uh, 18. 18. 18. Is that a whole day shooting day? How, how is that? Um, with, uh, because there's so much to fit into uh, um, an eight episode series, it tends to be, uh, with movies, yes, you might spend a, a whole day doing that because you're spending six months shooting and it's only two hours on screen, potentially two and a half hours max. And with TV, you're looking at eight hours. And so that was a small portion of the day. It was um, a day, it was actually a couple of weeks filled with stunts uh, during a fight, which I don't want to say just yet, but uh, you'll see. Um, the, it's very obvious which, which day, which, which uh, fight that is when it happens. Okay. We're ready. Are you guys ready to see that? Yeah. yeah. Lauren Henry, thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the Filipino people, thank you very much for being here today. Let's give them a round of applause. Some <laughs> Everybody's very excited to uh, take pictures, but would you like to say something to everybody? This has been a very long journey for both of us, and we've both put everything we have into this. Uh, for me personally, this is um, a dream come true. I'm a lover of the fantasy genre, as I've said, and Geralt of Rivia in particular, it's, uh, it's across two loves of mine, PC gaming and fantasy genre reading. and. Uh, to have this so close to being released is an incredibly exciting time for me, and I think I can speak for and say the same. And uh, we just can't wait for you guys to watch it all. <laughs> December 20, everybody, The Witcher on Netflix. All right, let's please stand. Let's take remove these uh, chairs. Let's walk off here for a while. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, joking.